Years of teaching confirmation often ended me up in a odd situation. It typically always happened at the beginning of confirmation, the first session or two, when I would cover the idea that there is nothing that God cannot do. Everything is within God's magnificent power. Inevitably, after bringing this idea up to 6th graders or 7th graders, I would have a student raise their hand and ask the question, something to the effect of, Pastor Hilly, let me, let me ask you, can God microwave a burrito so hot that God cannot eat it? Now, this question is undoubtedly funny, but it is a lose-lose situation right? Because if I say, yes, God can, then God can microwave a burrito so hot that God cannot eat it, which is something God cannot do eating the microwaved burrito. If, however, I say, no, God cannot microwave a burrito so hot that God cannot eat it, then I've said that God cannot do something. Either way, it is a lose-lose situation. I always think about God's cosmic burrito whenever we get to today's reading from the 21st chapter of Matthew's Gospel. When the Gospel opens, the chief priests and the elders approach Jesus and ask Jesus about his authority. By whose authority do you do these things? Speaking about his teaching and his preaching and the miracles and that sort of thing. By whose authority do you do this? Jesus, in turn, offers them a counter-question. Jesus says, if you answer my question, I'll answer your question. And so Jesus asks them. He says, the baptism of John the Baptist, is it from heaven or is it of man? Now, the key difference here between God's cosmic burrito, that question, and the question that Jesus asked his audience is that the question Jesus is asking them is not a trick question. In fact, he asks it in a way to ask their opinion. Which do you say? What do you think? Is John the Baptist's baptism of heaven or of man? And notice that his audience kind of breaks out into a side session because they have to talk about their options. They have to figure things out. They kind of get in a little group, I always imagine, it, and start huddling and go, okay, how do we, how do we answer this question? If we say John the Baptist's baptism is from heaven, then people will ask us why we haven't gone out and been more supportive and how we, why haven't we responded to it in a different way. But if we say it is of man, then all of those who believe in John the Baptist are going to revolt. They are going to riot if we just say he's a normal guy because they believe him as well as believing in him. And so those are gathered and trying to weigh out the argument. Do we say of heaven or do we say of man? Because one way creates a much, much bigger headache for us here at the temple. And the other way might end up with riots in the streets. And so what they do is they feign ignorance. They shrug. They say, I don't know. It's a situation I've been in before. And I'm sure it's a situation you've been in before, too. Because, see, what's happening here is with Jesus' question, his audience finds themselves caught in a tension. And it's a tension between expediency and principle. It's a tension between safety and truth. Jesus asked them, which do you think? Well, tell me about the baptism of John the Baptist. Do you think it is from heaven or of man? What do you think? And instead of answering that question with one of those two answers, they feign ignorance. I don't know. How often have we been in situations like that? A parent or a sibling or a friend or a teacher or a boss says, what on earth happened here? We could give the honest answer. We could tell them what we know, but we're afraid of the repercussions. And so we shrug and say, I don't know. We choose safety over principles, safety over truth. We pretend to be ignorant, knowing exactly what happened, because we do not want to deal 
with the outcome. But friends, let's keep reading in today's gospel. Because after their question and after Jesus' counter-question, Jesus continues and gives us a parable of a father with two sons. The father goes up to the first son and says, Son, I, I'd like you to work in the field today. And the first son says, No, I'd rather not. And so the father goes on to the second son. While he has moved on, that first son who said no and actually goes out and works in the field that day. While this is happening, however, the father goes to the second son and goes, Son, I need you to work in the field today. That son says, Yes, I would love to. Absolutely. I'm sure he stands up and is respectful and shakes his hand and says, I'll be there lickety split. But as the father moves on from that conversation, that son sits down and ends up not going out. In this parable, what we see is a tension between performance versus promise. One son says no, and yet performs. He goes out and works the field. The other son makes the promise, but there is no performance. This parable underlines the idea that between the two, performance is better than promise. Doing the thing is better than saying you will do the thing, but not doing the thing. However, it's imperative when we hear or read this parable to remember the simple truth that neither one of these sons is actually a good example. They are both flawed. They both err. The first son says no, seemingly overlooking that commandment to honor your father and mother. The second son says yes, but then just doesn't do it, and no-shows. These are both horrible examples. Now, between the two, again, performance is better than promise. But both of these sons are lackluster. As I was preparing for the sermon this week, I kept thinking about last week's gospel, about the landowner who calls people to work in the vineyard at different times of the day. One of the many parables that Matthew tells us, remembering that Jesus started a number of parables with, with the phrase, the kingdom of heaven is like. That parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who goes out and invites people to work. Some at sunrise, some at nine, some at noon, some at three, and some at five. What I love about this parable is how it starts the kingdom of heaven is like and shows so many different kinds of people. There is the landowner and then there are those who come in at all the different times. And my favorite line of that parable is the line, and they grumbled. As they're watching one another get paid, the first in being the last to get paid, they grumble as the landowner pays everybody equally out of his generosity. I love the inclusion that the kingdom of heaven is sometimes like people who grumble, because we all grumble from time to time. I kept thinking about that reading today's gospel reading. The kingdom of heaven is like a father who has two sons. One son says they won't go, but then does. The other son says they will go, but they don't. Considering these imperfect members of the kingdom of heaven creates a place for me and for you, for everybody who may not feel as holy as we ought to be, whatever that means. I love the creation of a space for those who say yes and can't show up, or those who say no but can. Creating a space in our image of the kingdom of heaven for those who grumble or those who show up late. Because what I find to be the true, powerful gospel of this parable is that between the two sons, the father loves both of them equally. Jesus does not add that the father loved one of the two sons more than the other, or that the father disowned one or the other of the sons, but simply that a father had two sons, and they both made different decisions. I think that is what the kingdom of heaven is like. God, our Father, loves all of God's children when we make the right decision or the wrong decision or the questionable decision. And so what my prayer is for each and every one of us 
is that in the week ahead that we are blessed with strength and the courage to stand behind our principles instead of hiding in the idea of safety. May God give us the strength to stand in truth instead of hiding under the cover of ignorance. May God bless you and yours both this day and forevermore. Amen.